My Life as I Remember It, Chapter 2, Part 4, The Big House in Antris. Stud, my mother's younger brother, was married to a woman who came to live with the Jeffers family. Stud and her started a romance and eventually married. Stud, whose name was Hazel, looked like a movie star, and his wife always took a back seat to him throughout their marriage. Hazel had an automobile accident in Lake City, Tennessee, and he never completely recovered from that accident and eventually died of cancer, and he died at my grandmother's house, my grandmother Jeffress. Hugh lived several years in Middlesboro. He operated a clothing store, a variety-type store in Middlesboro. He suffered from some kind of lung disorder, and he died a few years before Stud. A lady called Ma Fultz lived with us in Anthrus for a short time. She was a fun person and loved to tell scary stories to us kids. She was a terrific storyteller, and I can remember sitting wide-eyed as she told of a black panther that screamed like a woman and roamed the hills around Anthrus. Sometimes late at night, I am sure I heard the panther screaming. Young boy's imagination running away with him. I was always on the lookout for the black panther, and I always remember that story when I am in that area of Campbell County. And Graham is out there looking in the window. My mother had another brother named John Jeffress. People said he was the meanest of them all. He ran a beer joint up in the mountains for several years, so I guess if you can do that and survive, you must be a mean person. He also died of lung cancer. One evening, John came to our house to see Dad about some kind of mine business. He was carrying a pistol, and I was fascinated with the sight of a man carrying a gun. When I asked him about it, he handed the loaded pistol to me. Dad jumped up, grabbed the gun, and became angry with John for letting me hold a loaded weapon. The way John reacted to Dad, you would think Dad was the meanest person. My uncle got up and left the house, and I can't ever remember him visiting us again. The only other time I remember any association with John was during one of our trips to Black Oak. John was having some problems with his wife, who he eventually divorced. My mother was angry with him over this, and they began to argue. My mother was so mad, she hit him in the face with her fist and knocked him flat on his back on the ground. <laughs> I stood there in amazement, seeing this uncle KO'd by my mother. You should have known your great, 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 whatever generation is watching this video. You should have known my, my mother. During the 30s and 40s, all the mining camp commissaries had a gambling device called punch boards. The prizes were usually shotguns, fancy clocks, and statues. My Uncle Hugh Jeffress figured out a way to cheat those punch boards. He went around to all the commissaries, punching 10 to 15 holes in the punch boards. He also picked up from the counter all the, numbered, all the other numbers that had been punched by other people. Each board listed the winning number, and Hugh would take the slips of paper home. He came up with a way to shave the numbers from the pieces of punched paper. Before long, he had a counterfeit, a counterfeit winning number. After he produced his counterfeit winner, he went back to the commissary and punched some more pieces of paper. The counterfeit winning slip of paper was hidden between his fingers. Without the clerk seeing him, he would punch through one empty hole 
and when he unfolded his slip of paper, he was a winner. Hugh had a van loaded with all kinds of shotguns and trinkets. He had one from punch boards. As all con men and crooks do, he was caught and arrested for ripping off the punch boards. When he came before the judge, the judge said, My boy, I have always hated gambling and those damn punch boards. You have my permission to go all over the county and cheat as many of them as you can. <laughs> His fame had spread throughout the coal fields of Tennessee and Kentucky, and the judge's ordered, orders made him an unwelcome man in establishments that had punch boards. And a lot of beer joints had punch boards, and he'd ripped those off, so you had to have nerve to do that. Some of the places he had cheated wanted Hugh to come back, <laughs> but he wasn't about... He, let's see, he wanted him to come back, but he wasn't about to go back and suffer the wrath of those store and bar managers. 